server room. Low ambient kit situation. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Tad, you're watching Tips for Technicians, and today we're covering low ambient kit. Why you need a low ambient kit, what it looks like when you have a low ambient kit installed. This is the ICM325, you can see that right there. It breaks the outdoor fan motor on this condenser, and it also has a sensor, and that sensor or thermistor is, has a little bulb, and it mounts inside the condenser coil. So it measures the temperature, and the outdoor fan motor adjusts its speed to increase the head pressure. During the cold winter months, uh, this application is we're serving a server room, and it gets really hot in there, so we need to be able to run in cooling during the winter so that we can cool efficiently without having a freeze-up situation because, of course, during the winter time, if you try to run cooling and it's regular conventional unit without a low ambient kit, you're going to have a frozen coil and you're not going to be able to run efficiently. It's just going to freeze the unit up. And this is a efficient way or a more efficient way to make a unit run in the cooling operation with low outdoor ambient conditions. I'm going to talk about the ICM control. We're going to look at how to install it. But first, I'm going to show you the condenser fan motor and you'll be able to see what it's doing right now. Also, look at the pressures. Right now we got low side 130 and high side 325. Indoor temperature is 80 degrees, so it's nice and toasty in there, but check this out. Looks like we're running about half speed, right? Isn't that cool? And then you can see right there, that's that white little wire that goes to the bulb. And that bulb is placed inside that outdoor coil. Now, I'm gonna turn this around. Well, first I'm gonna show you, I've got my temperature probe on my suction line, my vapor line, and it's 63 degrees, okay? So 63 degrees. And what's great about these newer units is I can actually use my door here. There's a charging chart. So I can get the outdoor ambient temperature, my suction temperature, and then I should be able to find out what my suction pressure should be, okay? So you gotta make sure you have an infrared thermometer. Now right there is the ICM control, and it's kind of hard to see because it's a little bit dark. This is the defrost board, and this is what breaks line going to the outdoor fan. I've got an extra wire there, and it's going to my ICM control. And then I've got a power wire going in there uh, from the other side of the line. And then I take my line coming from my outdoor fan, and I go into there. Let's look at a schematic for this, and I'm gonna show you more because we really can't see this right here, but this is a great way to make this unit run more efficiently during the cold winter months. I'm able to achieve nice cooling inside. I'll show you the server room, and you can, guys can look at how much heat this thing is outputting before we look at our thermostat. All right, let's go take our infrared therm thermometer inside. See in this server room, everything is pretty hot. We've got 90, 85. So it's critical we keep all this nice and cool. It's not very cool in here right now, 79 degrees. Temperature coming out of the supply vent is 58. So we got a really good temperature split. So 79 and 58. So set, oh, 57 and 79. So we got 20 degrees split. That's a really good temperature split. So we know the unit's charged. All right, before we go look at the schematic, you can see that, see how that little bulb, that's a thermistor. It is plugged into that coil there. And our outdoor fan is spinning about half speed. There's a couple settings for the outdoor fan. Uh, there is a speed cutout and a hard start, minimum and maximum. This is where our temperature probe goes, S1 temperature probe, uh, heat pump, 24 volts, I've got red in common, and then I've got it normally closed for heat pump. This is a heat pump. We got a defrost board there, so we know it's a heat pump. It's got ambient uh, coil sensor and an ambient sensor. Hey guys, we're back at the office. Before we look at the schematic, we're going to talk about the mode of operation for this head pressure control and also the different applications that you can use this head pressure control for, or what I like to call low ambient kit. 
I'm also going to talk to you about where you can pick one of these up at. If you guys have any questions that are specific, leave those in the comments and definitely do not forget to subscribe. Thanks so much to all my subscribers. I really appreciate all the awesome comments that you guys leave me every week. Thank you so much. All right, so this is the head pressure control that you saw on that outdoor condenser. And it says right here, typical application, air conditioning and heat pumps. And then also down here, applications. Okay, so ideal for low ambient conditions found in supermarkets, frozen food storage, computer rooms, cooling tower fans. We were in a computer room and we have temperature humidity sensitive environments so whereas the unit needs to run more to take care of these situations especially when it's a low ambient condition which is low outdoor temperature all right look at mode operation then we're going to cover the schematic uh, it says right here the icm head pressure control operates as a temperature sensitive motor fan speed control head pressure is regulated during the low ambient conditions by varying the amount of airflow through the condenser this helps ensure sufficient pressure across the expansion valve, preventing costly downtime and or loss of valuable perishable goods. Now you can see the website that I'm on is icmcontrols.com. So this is where you can go to learn more about it. And they also have a link for different distributors. See right there, you can actually click uh, ICM 325HN head pressure control and you can find the distributor or product inquiries. Now I'm going to go over here where it says installation guide. All right, now we have the schematic here. So we can learn different things like, for instance, we can scroll down and we can look at where we need to connect the probe. It says right here, install the temperature probe several bins into the condenser. It can be attached to the U-bend or placed between fins in the upper third of the condenser. And what it does is, and I've got mine inside the fins, but the response of the system can be fine-tuned by repositioning the probe. Place the probe on the condenser where it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit when pressures are correct for the best response. So, all right, let's see here. We had a heat pump, and it shows us right here connections for the ICM HNV connections for heat pump system. Uh, connections for air conditioner only, okay? So we just need 24 volts coming in, our temperature probe. Then it shows us how to set the um, hard start uh, time. And we can look at that. Um, and then it shows mode of operation. Now I'm going to talk about mode of operation real quick. Then we're going to look at how I hook this up. With probe temperatures above 100 degrees, the control applies voltage to the motor. Okay, when it's above 100 degrees. The green light is illuminated. With probe temperatures between 70 and 100, the motor speed is proportional to the probe temperature. So it is adjusting the amount of voltage that it throws to that outdoor fan based off of the temperature of the outdoor coil. And that is a great way. See, I have had a head pressure control that just shuts the outdoor fan off. Those are very inefficient. Starting and stopping that motor is basically um, decreasing the longevity of that motor. Now here's the schematic that I use. You see how we've got um, our defrost board. Um, it's breaking the fan. We've got one wire coming from the defrost board contact to motor uh, two, okay? And that goes to that one side of the motor. The other side of the motor goes to the line voltage, okay? And then you've got a field installed wire right there from our line voltage to that line one. And then you've got, of course, your other side of your line, which powers this right here. Boop. So you've got automatically you're supplying one line to that line one and then the other line goes here. And then this is a normally open contact inside this control. And when it sends voltage, it sends voltage through here. Boom and then your outdoor fan is powered. So, see there, you can actually serve up to three refrigeration systems with this. You got three different probes for that one control here. So that's really cool. Just wanted to show you guys the schematic and you can actually download this off of icmcontrols.com. All right, hope this, I hope this was a good video for you. I hope you learned something. And again, if you have any questions, let me know. ICMcontrols.com
for setting the speed cutout and the hard start time, you set it by what bearings you have, whether you have a sleeve bearings or whether you have ball bearings. And you'll be able to know that because your motor is going to usually have one or the other. And how to tell the difference, I'll show you that. So sleeve bearing, that's a sleeve bearing, and that's a ball bearing. And sleeve bearings are more common in the HVAC industry, but you also have ball bearings. So make sure you know the difference so that you're more professional and prepared in the field.